Welcome back to Campfire Stories, brought to you by the Malden Public Library. This week's story is in honor of the 4th of July, also known as Independence Day, and the historical stories that compromise our national myth. There are a lot of tales surrounding our nation's formation. Some of them are based in the historical record, and some are subject to a tall tale-like embellishment. The characters that help bring about our independence have become popular heroes, but have also become almost mythological figures. We all know the fact and fictions about people like George Washington, Alexander Hamilton, Paul Revere, John Hancock, and of course, John Adams. We tell a lot of truish stories about our nation, But that history is subject to a lot of mythologizing. Tonight's story imagines a time when those more fantastical stories get reconstructed as part of an archaeological record that lacks our current fondness for the USA. It is horrific and disturbing and a little bit weird and pretty disconcerting, which makes it perfect for the 4th of July campfire story. So, on to tonight's reading so we can learn more about the Adam's abomination. This story is called What We Have Surmised About the John Adams Incarnation. It's by Lincoln Michael in his collection Upright Beasts. You can actually request this book to borrow from our library or other libraries in our network you will find it in the catalog. Okay, that said, let's begin. What We Have Surmised About the John Adams Incarnation by Lincoln Michael. Although much remains unclear about John Adams, alternately referred to in recovered documents as John Adam, John Adams with an E, and the Adams Abomination. Recent drone expeditions into the charred continent have unearthed new artifacts that lead us closer to understanding this mysterious entity. Long assumed to be a prince or demon of lesser cult, we now know that John Adams was an important figure in the dominant United Statesian mythology. He appears to have originally been conceived as a familiar or minion of George Washington, the first of the hundred tyrants that are said to have ruled the country until its infamous self-inflicted demise. It was only later that John Adams was celebrated as a deity in his own right. His physical manifestation is a source of debate. Certain scholars suggest he was worshipped as an enormous goat-like god, or perhaps a sentient birch tree referred to as the brain tree by the cults of Puritan that populated the region now known as the twice-damned seaboard. Often, he is portrayed as a fat, sullen man whose lips seem curled in a perpetual frown. As the second of the early tyrants, likely monarchs, who were worshipped as divine, although possibly purely mythological figures, John Adams can be placed squarely in what may be called the constitutional pantheon of the United Statesian religion. His chief rivals in this group were Alexander the Uncrowned Hamilton and Thomas Jefferson, the latter of whom would usurp his throne. It is believed that Adams' symbols were the split acorn, the horned hare, and the first feather of the newborn eagle. The acolytes of Adams do not appear to have had as much influence as the followers of more prominent gods, such as Benjamin Franklin, Lincoln of the Logs, and the great traitor Burr, a title that was perhaps ironic given his apparent influence among the southern lands. Of all the sacred coins and wood pulp currency sheets that have been unearthed from the burnt rubble, None have featured the visage of John Adams, a fact that is rather unusual among the early tyrants. 
Here, it must be noted that many scholars now believe these beings were not necessarily viewed as separate by the United Statesians, but rather different incarnations of the one founding father deity, also known as George Washington. The first incarnation, Uncle Sam, or the first and the last, the truth and the lie, the founding father in this conception, was a shape-shifting and eternal god believed to have formed the nation by tearing apart fragments of the gigantic life tree with his teeth of wood and regurgitating 50 large bark chunks into the sea to form the collective states. In his fleeting incarnations as John Adams, the Founding Father was pale, bloated, and quick to anger. His commandments were enforced by a set of terrifying minions known only as the Midnight Judges. Scholars agree that this was a tumultuous time for early United States in society, as the wars with rival nations, such as Imperial France and Britain, of the first decay, had taken their tolls on the populace. The newly formed United States was working to define itself and struggling with enemies both within and without. The monstrous John Adams incarnation likely provided a feeling of strength and destiny to the huddled and starving United Statesians. Although harsh in demeanor and despised among the citizenry, the John Adams incarnation is giving credit for defeating the rival gods of imperial France, almost certainly symbolic of an actual conflict known mysteriously as the Quasi-War in a grand battle that raged atop the Purple Mountains and Shining Seas for 12 cycles before John Adams emerged bloodied and tired, yet victorious. With the enemies defeated and peace at hand, the need for the brutal John Adams incarnation had passed. He served his people and maintained the power of the new nation. When he looked on what he had wrought, John Adams is said to have let out a mouth-long howl from the center of the sacred house in white, a scream so terrible in force it rendered an entire generation deaf and ripped apart the very earth, forming the great canyon of the western desert. A fissure the Adams incarnation disappeared into only to reemerge weeks later as the kindly Jefferson form. Hopefully continued archaeological expeditions into the continent will uncover more findings to expand our understanding of the ancient United Statesian religion and society. It is important to remember that the early United Statesians were a frightened but proud people. Despite the lower levels of spectrum radiation and thinner dust metal storms, the world was as confusing and painful a place to them as it is to us now. Although their religion may strike us as arcane and barbaric, you must put yourself in their mindset. They were building a new society in a strange and foreign land. The night was dark. The beasts were loud. Death, in all its myriad incarnations, was, as always, right around the corner. All right. So that was a quick one this evening. And it certainly puts perspective on the stories we tell about our nation, our founding fathers, and more specifically, the stories we tell about other people and their nations that have come before us. Um, it's what I really appreciate about this story because it, it puts into perspective how much storytelling plays into history and archaeology and our conception of cultural and national identity. Um, So I hope you enjoyed tonight's reading. I thought it fit nicely with the upcoming 4th of July holiday. Next week, we're going to have a a story that's um, local. It's a little bit of a local treat. Lily is going to tell a Malden ghost story. Um, And I thought, you know, kind of high July summer was the best time to tell it. Uh, So it's actually a story that's been requested by one of our listeners, and hopefully they're going to tune in for that now that we've been able to put it together. 
Um, so yeah, come back and hear about uh, haunting close to home. Until then, stay cool, stay hydrated, and stay well read. Thanks again. Thank <laughs> you.